SEGA. Sega. <laughs> Bad timing on that. Ahoy everyone and welcome aboard. I'll be a Captain Hillian tonight along with 
I use the light <laughs> Lieutenant Rakir at your service and, uh, um, and yeah. he is a spooktuber. <laughs> Uh, give me a second to correct that. Oh, so and realized, in a way, oh, I think it's fitting that. Oh, sorry, go on. Yeah, I, I think it's a bit fitting that we're do now. We're on the chaos expansion standalone, whatever you want to call it. And yeah, I think it's a bit fitting to have you well with the helmet and uh, the mask on, since well, spooky, scary chaos. Yeah, and I also had an idea what we can do. When we do retribution. Uh, we put an orc on you. Uh, don't put an orc on me. Don't <laughs> put me. Give me some orcish gear, yes, but don't put an orc on me. <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll yeah, I'll keep a lookout for that. But yeah, other than all of you, <laughs> let me correct that. I think it just gave you the white screen. Yeah, uh, it should be something else, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, Discord and OBS are still weird with each other with screen share. I I'll, I may need to look around just uh, positioning the window, the preview projector differently uh, so that they don't overlap. Maybe that'll help fix things. Or maybe it just doesn't like it when the part of OBS isn't the focus or something. Or it, It's just weird in general. Anyways, belated, uh, welcome back to well, Warhammer 40k Dawn of War 2 Chaos Rising, which is, is a bit of a mouthful. Uh, really? yeah, but not as, yeah, though it's not as much as a mouthful, I'd say, as Dungeons and Dragons Forgotten Realms Demon Stone, which is also a game that I plan to stream eventually. But for now, we need to finish this game and Retribution first, and then we'll move really? on to... Hmm, what? I, I I played that. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> I did. I don't. I didn't own it. I borrowed it from a friend for PlayStation Two. <laughs> okay, I, I'm pretty sure that was the first game through which I ever got into contact with Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, for me, it was Baldur's Gate, the first one. Uh, let's see. This one is the most recent, I believe. Because we had an. It, this is not the name of the character we. or the. the save file we were using. Yeah, day three. <laughs> Sound like a pun. Anyways, last time, well, we got started with the game where basically the warp spat a planet out back into reality. And uh, yeah, some shenanigans are going on on the surface with. Uh, well. The uh, forces from the governor who fled during the last game popping up. And uh, yeah, the elder are now there as well. So if they are interested in this rock, then we should probably be as well. Yeah, I, I actually watched a lot of video about them yesterday. Is I kind of regret like, like, uh, watching a lot of video about the Blood Angels now. Yeah, okay, you got some I spoilers. Yeah, it gave me a little bit spoiler. Okay. But I didn't know that this apparently was used to be the Blood Angel capital before it is yep. the warp. So they became a base fleet uh, chapter. Let's see. Trade unlocked. Go ahead. Uh, I was like, also, something else I learned about them. Unlike other space marine chapters, Blood Angel see the Emperor as a mighty human, not a god. Even though okay. they praise him a lot, but they praise him as a mighty human, the greatest of them. It has apparently gotten them into some conflict with the Ecclesiarchy. <laughs> okay, that explains why uh, they fight each other in Dark Crusade, was it, I believe? Probably there. Mm, I probably should try to play through more of the uh, grand scale expansions of Dawn of War 1 at some point, just to see what's going on with there. They, from what I know, they are a whole lot lighter on story, which is why we're not streaming them. <clears throat> and yeah, now we've got unlocked something else. Uh, to the third trait unlocked, Piercing Cry. Battle Cry stuns and damages nearby demons. If Battle Cry is not unlocked, gain the Piercing Cry ability with that same effect. Gain the blood loss trait, uh, gaining the blood thrust trait will remove this trait. Yeah, it's because uh, morality is now an actual effect. Oh dear, uh, I just noticed something with the gauntlet. Yeah. 
Look at his knuckles. <laughs> Blue gems. Or what looks like gems. Gemstones per no. When does this game come out? Uh, 2000 something. Before or after the adventure uh, trilogy, yeah. whatever it was, you know, before or yeah. after Thanos? Uh, that's a whole lot more recent. That was at least <laughs> at least the te late tens to early twenties, or earlier twenties, seeing as it's twenty three. Have you found the inspiration behind the Infinity Gauntlet? <laughs> <laughs> now that was the Infinity Gauntlet has been around since like the. The 80s or 90s or some probably the 90s ish i actually was watching a, a series of videos by sf debris about thanos recently i still i think he still needs to continue on with that but yeah <laughs> thanos and the stones have been around for quite a lot longer than you think okay so it's probably the good inspire but if you the counter for that one then okay now let's see which path do we want to continue down further here uh, when using to victory, the forest commander stuns any enemy infantry in his path. Uh, let's go up with the with health first. I don't remember what the level cap of this mode is, but I'm guessing it's up to thirty or twenty, or not, thirty or forty, judging by just how freaking big they made these. He's basically doubled them. <clears throat> but yeah, everyone gets a, a new trait because they are well pure in the eyes of the emperor as it says here that can of course lower but that can actually unlock other things as well uh, let's see fervor Torcus has increased attack power and defense when in battle with demons gained bloodlust and getting the blood trust that yeah, lost traits removes this trait that bloodlust is basically the first uh dark or chaotic uh, ish uh, level i believe Oh. Avatus gets vengeance. Whenever an allied space marine dies, Avatus heals to full health and receives a temporary but substantial damage bonus. Damage bonus. Okay, Cyrus has something to say. Remains concerned about the ambush on Argent Glacier. I still do not see how these rebels could have imitated a Blood Raven's distress signal. The codes and rights for using our relays are among our most closely guarded secrets. Our chapter hides far more than its communication rights. Perhaps, but someone knew just how to draw us into that trap. Okay, audio on that was a bit lower as well. I, I've upped the yeah. uh, yeah, I've upped the audio on gameplay of well, just all of the gameplay by just upping or rather lowering the uh yep. Yeah. Basically before audio of the games and desktop were at minus 10 de decibels now they're to minus 4 decibels hmm. Cyrus gets mend revives incapacitated units at full health when equipped uh, when equipping a stimulant kits their use is an energy based ability yeah as if Cyrus normally wasn't useful enough as a medic now well as long as he has energy infinite heals <laughs> that is actually a really good reason to start using him again, since we've kind of neglected him since, well, we got freaking Thule. Yeah, though we didn't need a sniper to many of those missions. True. Is, we, we don't have a apothecary. Uh, Jonah can work as one, sort of. But yeah, I, I think an apothecary would probably be overlapping a bit with others too much, or they would be. Mm, yeah, a, 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 Space Marine apothecaries are not non-combatants, uh, so I realize they don't have their own squad. Like they are attached to a squad. Yeah, and there's not so, there's not many of them typically, I believe. Hmm. Yeah, so it would probably be weird to have one lone apothecary uh, as a, its solo team. True. Anyways, Thaddeus gets tireless, regains health whenever he performs a jump or teleport. Okay. So even more reason to just keep him hopping around like a freaking armored frog. Uh, let's see. Thaddeus. <laughs> 
<laughs> not where I was going, but the, actually those frogs are nude, I believe. So no armor there. Uh, true. And yes, I had played the first Battletoads on the very old Nintendo. We never got past the first racing part. <laughs> I think most people didn't. Also, notice something yeah. here. There's something missing. Everyone else, including Jonah, has the uh, morality system, but Thule does not, which means that he doesn't get any buffs from that, but he also won't get any change in that, because, well, he's a dreadnought. He is completely and utterly immune to corruption. Thank you, mm. Intervention Commander. The Emperor's favor is clearly with you and your battle brothers. It is an honor to serve alongside the heroes of Typhon. Thank you, Jonah. Is that no. I don't are they really immune? You know, I, I know I heard the uh, chaos between C being put into a dreadnought as a punishment that do they do put their own into dreadnoughts as well. Yeah. Um Yeah the, Chaos Space Marine Dreadnoughts or um Yeah, not nice. Yeah, yeah, you could probably do a horror novel on those. Definitely. Let's see. Jonah gets Purify. Purge an ally of the imperfections of wounds and disease, restoring their health. Okay. And yeah, since he is new, he comes with a few free levels. And quite a lot of stuff that we could put that into, but as we saw, he is very fragile. So we'd, we'd want to keep him at a distance from things. So let's see. Outburst, after using a psychic power, Jonah unleashes a radial discharge that damages and stuns nearby enemies. Okay, also um, gains access to Tome of Fire. What the heck is that? Morality, pure in the eyes of the Emperor. Yep, I was pointing that out earlier with all the others. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I missed that text. <laughs> Should I I'm put some glasses on you as emblem. well? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. When using a psychic power, Jonah challenges energies through his body to heal his own wounds. Okay, that would be really useful. Conduit improves his ability to draw power from the warp, reducing the energy cost of all his abilities. Also gains access to Tome of Power. Those tomes are accessories, I believe. Uh, let's see. Regains energy whenever he attacks. Also access to a relic granting a reactive teleport. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, let's go let's down this. Let's see. Let's get at least that. And this. And the rest we'll put into here for now. I'm, I'm the least familiar with Jonah of all the characters because he only joins in this game. So I don't really know how to really build him, but I'm going to, I'm going to try and go the same way with Avatus. Just range damage and energy mostly. And let's see, mm -hmm. Staff of Jove. Yep. Enhances smite ability, victims from smite are stunned, chance on hit to stun. Okay, and you were going to say? I say, a lot of this is from the view that Blood is just one of those chapters that have a lot of... a lot of psychers. They have actually a lot of librarians compared to other chapters. You mean Blood Ravens? Because I'm pretty sure you said uh, Blood, Blood Angels. Angels. Apparently it's very common for people to accidentally missay both chapters with each other by accident due to the da damn name start with blood. Yeah, just, just call them the Ravens or the Magpies. Uh, Ravens. The bloody Ravens. And you, oh yeah, now I remember. Uh, yeah. These accessories count as spells that he also gains access to if he equips them. Uh, let's see. Grants Empower. Hello. Written in characters that glow with psychic power, this tome allows the librarian to empower his allies so they may use their abilities at an increased rate. Okay, so cooldown reduction. Tome of Time. Veil of Time. Increased movement speed and attack. Remove setup times. Using this ancient tomb. <coughs> not tomb. Tome. The Librarian may lift the Veil of Time itself, allowing his allies to move and act faster than their enemies. Let's put that on for now. 
Tome of Mists, Grounds Vanish, renders, render a unit invisible. Okay, that's just a description of what the ability actually is. Okay, good that they do at least that. Sometimes games will say, sometimes game, sometimes RPG games will have it where this, an item says grants this or that ability without actually showing what the hell that ability is. Yeah. Or, or unnecessarily vague about it. Let's see, we also have the Tome of Fire, Might, Sigil of the Watchman. Requires zealous traits. This one requires avenging blows, which is a melee one, actually. Let's see. Increased, okay, increased hand to hand damage. We don't want him in melee, so he's not getting that. And Tome of Fire grants Ignite Soul, basically a psychic fireball. And Tome of Force. Force Dome protects against range damage. Let's actually take that instead of Mist. Okay, well, and... Else mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Do that I have so many librarians, but I have investigated and realized they... The reason I have so many librarians is they just happen to have... Uh, have s the worst they usually recruit from just happen to have a... more... a bit more than average amount of psychers. So they just... I pure coincidence get more psychers from the recruiter world. A pure coincidence. However... Okay. Mm -hmm. This also led to that many of the librarians are more than just librarians. They, may, they actually take double rooms because there's so many of them. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's read out some descriptions of these. Staff of Jove. Uh, Apostolary Antheus first made use of this mighty staff, which allows psychic lightning to incapacitate enemy units. And yeah, since he's a librarian, he gets access to force weaponry, like this warrior force sword. Uh, not only discharging the librarian's psychic power in deadly energy, this mastercrafted force sword is guided as much by the wielder's mind as his arm, making him a master swordsman. Plus 10 melee skill, but again, we rather not get him in melee. Uh, Blessed of Solivus. Don't think we read this one out. The death of an enemy of man is a bomb to the warrior's soul. From the teachings of Solivus Ben... Yeah, yeah, we did read that, read that one. Um, we just have some basic equipment there, and the warp crown. Uh, to reactive teleports. Melee attackers may be warped away. This hood forms a field of warp energies around the about the librarian. When under close combat attack, this field often sends attackers through the warp, teleporting them away a short distance. But it requires the battle lust trait. Which is where? There, okay. Hmm. It'll be a while since he, until he'll be able to use that. Okay. Uh, ta -ta -ta. Although many commanders go bareheaded on the field of battle, others use command issue helmets. These often include special tactical display cogitators such as those included in this mastercrafted helmet. Okay. Hmm. Armor. Let's actually put this on you. <laughs> it does hide that pretty face, but it's quite a bit of armor. And we're Did actually you just a bit your own face? <laughs> no, his. That is Let's you. See. Read out the name. <laughs> yeah, I do, but <laughs> I'm just trying to <laughs> jerk you around a bit. Okay. <laughs> Let's give you Isidore's Folly. A shiny. Holy. Okay, I think we actually do need to look around a bit through the people's armor because they've all been given just basic stuff, it seems. Let's see, 42, 30, 36, 45, and suppression resistance. There. Avatars, what armor do you have? Just artificer. Uh, let's see, melee damage, suppression resistance, 11% range damage. Let's give you that. It's not as strong or defensive, but you are more offensive yourself in personality and behavior. Uh, 36. It is actually stronger than most of the stuff here. So, yeah. Time to sell a few. Let's see. Did we read? Uh, yeah, we've read that one before. 
Okay. And just sort everything out again. Okay, Tark has got a level from that, so let's get you. I shall not fall as long so long as tactical advance is active. Tarkus fights through the most uh, wor to be that, through the worst of injuries and cannot be incapacitated. Okay, useful. <laughs> um, yeah, let's just keep going that way since these are both tanks. One is just melee, the other is ranged. Okay, and uh, now let's go. <laughs> now let's actually move, since the game is really insistent with this little annoying arrow. Okay, back to Meridian. Oh dear. Hold on tight. Commander, Governor DeRosa here. Insurgents loyal to House Vandis have launched a sabotage campaign here on Meridian. Our infrastructure is still crippled from the Eldar and Tyranid attacks, and the Vandis rebels know just where to strike to cause the most damage. What's more, raids from Orc looters have become endemic. We could use any aid you can provide, Commander. And yeah, she's uh, gotten a promotion to Governor since the last one ran off. <laughs> okay, but still a bit yeah. of odds with the uh, audio balancing, it seems. Hmm. Commander, this insurgency has stretched our loyal forces to the limit. Orc looters have infested the Hablocks outside Angel Gate, and I can spare no troops to stop them. Only you can eliminate these Xenos before they reach Angel Forge. Okay. What do Orcs have to do with the insurgency? House Vandis wants Angel Forge for itself. They are driving the Orcs ahead of them in order to weaken the Forge's defenses. If the insurgents take Angel Forge, they will have access to massive weapon stores. Okay, how well defended is the Forge? Most Imperial Guard forces have been diverted to deal with Vandis insurgents. Those guardsmen still at the Forge are dangerously short-handed. The defensive gate has been restored, but it remains in a weakened state. If Angel Gate falls, nothing stands between the rebels and the Forge. Okay, yeah, this place was left in quite a bit of disarray after our last visit, huh? Yeah, dude, there were... <clears throat> Let's be honest. A lot of came in that really did make them shorthanded. Eldar, Tyranids, Orcs... Yeah, and it, it sounds like the Rebels are using the typical strategies of cause trouble elsewhere to thin out defenses where you actually want to strike. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Object My mobility needed. Suited for this mission, Commander. The invasion left that area a maze of walls and obstacles. Our jump packs will allow us to get across any blockades. Uh, yeah, mobility needed. Bring jump or teleport packs to maximize your squad's mobility. The orcs are well armed. Expect vehicles, gunners in structures and ambushes. Angel Gate is the forge's final defense. Destroying it would render the forts vulnerable. Okay, and we get a yeah. Melta gun if we oh. win this, which is, well, another new weapon type. Oh, dear God, that's powerful. And yeah, I don't need to, need to finish my sentence for he... <coughs> the, the character basically just informed us what I wasn't going to say, that we need, we need him. Yeah. Okay, Thaddeus, let's see about your equipment. Uh, we get, need to get you some better armor. Let's see, 42, 36. A bunch of leftovers there. Uh, yeah, let's give you that one since it also gives you <laughs> melee damage. And let's see. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta, infantry, heavy infantry. Let's give you the claw. I think that deals more damage. Uh... Hmm. Oh dear. Actually, the axe it, the axe deals more damage and is faster. And also more action. No, that, I was looking at the wrong thing. I was looking at the freaking pistol. Uh, let's see, 44, but it is dam 44 damage, but it is almost twice as fast. Uh, yeah, let's keep the claw on for now. And then just hand you one of these pistols. Since I don't think we'll need... Anything specifically to deal with, well, plasma vulnerable stuff. 
Uh, we keep the melters on you. Hmm? But first we have uh, Infinity Content Wannabe, and now we have Wolverine Wannabe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Can't equip anything of that on you. Just double checking our equipment. Uh, not bringing. We're not bringing hmm, Thule, so you can bring something else. Let's give you the locator beacon, since this is going to be partially defensive, I believe. And beyond that, I think we have everything else, so let's go. Commander. Let's. Replenishing supplies, locate supply crates throughout missions, destroy them to reveal various types of supplies, which when picked up will replenish limited use equipment. Uh, yeah, basically what I said before, they changed it up so that it's not as general as usual. Okay. Oh, strategic supplies replenish the powerful Signum, Rosarius, and Locator Beacon, which were previously based about the, uh, the shrines and such. Glad to be done with this place. Surely Angel Forge is worth defending, Abatus. Worry about moralizing later, Librarian. There are orcs Shh. to kill. Shout it, Abatus. Okay. This way. I saw something from the sky. Space Marines! Tell them, boys! Okay, it's level for Avatus. And yeah, this is basically the map we've seen a few times before. Oh, hello. Commando knobs. Uh, you might want to move. Oh. Uh, yeah, this, we've seen this map before, but they have, well, moved it around a bit. So it is not as obviously the same, and there's still leftovers from the Theron of Invasion. Use explosives. Okay. <laughs> Nimble last cannon and heavy bolt of resilience, okay. Oh, that actually that actually didn't get rid of all of them. Okay. Okay. There we go, that did get rid of them all. Arathus, just focus fire, get rid of as many as you can. Ooh. Never know. Thaddeus. Gotta keep an, ooh, gotta keep an eye on them since he is rather vulnerable. Okay. Clear that out. And if I recall correctly, the reason that uh, knobs are called that is because it's supposed to be short for noble or something. Like ba basically, they're the basically they're the uh, yeah the nobles of the org ranks. But of yeah, course, they're not really noble. Yeah, you said those would be. The short term for Noble in Italy as well. We <laughs> I've been mentioned that in a stream. And uh, I think you do remember something here. Mm -hmm. Orcs have another name I've suppressed that we don't hear in the games, but they apparently say it a lot in lore about uh, as a, a nickname for Space Marines. Uh, what then? Beakies. Yeah, because of that, those dumb beak helmets that some of them have. Yeah, there was. In old Warhammer, the old, very much old edition, that the beaked ha uh, helmets were more the standard for all space marines. Reposition. But now, now only a few space marine uh, uh, shepherds use it on regularly. Like uh, Raven God is probably one of the few that use it regularly. Repositioning. Okay. 
I think they call Neos Marines Spike It's fitting. Okay, that one got absolutely nailed, but oh uh, well. Okay, everyone regroup. Going to keep collecting resources wherever we can. And let's see. Yeah, let's just sneak around over here to the storage place where we found our first set of Terminator armor. So I very much doubt that there's still much stored here. It's still always good to check. Oh, Space Marines! This is me lucky day! No, but you still alive! A war boss already. That's your master! Gonna kill him! Come on. Yeah, it could be a new orc with the same name, because yes, I'm pretty sure that or maybe it's on canon that we actually kill the war boss and the avatar. Is taking losses. Yeah. It is done. Okay. Avatars, pull back. Fadius would. Still keep their I still keep their names mixed up sometimes. Did that green skin say more, Space Marines? Well, that can't be good. Understood. Okay. Let's wait to capture this for a sec, and then we'll move on and clear out the rest of the looters. Taking longer than before. Then again, a lot of stuff has changed between this and the base game. Wait, didn't we have that already? <laughs> yes, we're literally carrying that around with us already. Hmm. I wonder, wonder how that will affect this. Do we have two now? Okay, Thaddeus, jump in. And you're missing one person. Oh. Okay, yeah. This would have been a good point to have the... <laughs> I didn't expect them to have this many blasted vehicles. <laughs> Wait, who did I talk to? <laughs> I told the wrong one to retreat. Okay, you love go play with this. Okay, yeah, this is a bit of a problem. Just pull back. Okay, let's see if we can lure these apart. Not that eager. We could probably try to use demolition charges here, since they are a lot slower to walk away. Okay, still fast enough to get out of the way, though. Ooh. Okay, but it's, it works at pushing them away from each other. Okay, the fight is apparently more important than dodging the big ass explosion. <laughs> but again, this is orcs we're talking about. Okay. You go heal. Okay, I might actually not need to pull you back each time. I don't just need you to move back a little bit with how fast you heal. Okay, you go get Thaddeus. He's probably getting sick of being run over by a bloody orc tank. Avatus. Yeah, it's a looted predator, yeah. Oh. It literally says looted tank. Okay, you pull back. You 
go knock on the bow a bit. It's a good thing that he still yeah. has that power up face, though. I meant they want the tank stands that are red and in ruins, not they want to be driven. Uh, yeah, th those are also... Yeah, I, I think they're more supposed to be Imperial Guard tanks. Commander, Governor DeRosa here. We are receiving a distress call from inside the defensive ring. We are under heavy fire from insurgent forces inside the perimeter. Heavy casualties! Well, it wouldn't be called this without these showing up. Make yourselves ready. The Blood Ravens will be here shortly. There is a command console inside the perimeter which you can use to lower the gate, Commander. Jump packs should allow you to reach it. Commander, that position is exposed. Then we break the gate down. Take the fiends by surprise. With Angel Gate shattered and the defenders dead, who will hold the forge the next time? Enough. The commander must decide. And yeah, now we risk corruption. If we fail certain uh, objectives or decide on certain paths, our units will gain corruption. Okay. This first one is easy enough, though. Okay, Thaddeus back down. So yeah, Thaddeus, or at least the fourth commander with a jump pack, is highly recommended for this mission. Okay. This way, my brothers. We have encountered Chaos Space Marines. Understood. The Imperial Guard will hold them as long as they can. Okay, between the heavy bolters and Tarkus's flamethrower, yeah, it's really easy to keep the enemy suppressed like this. Yeah, when they're suppressed, they are very much not as good as combat at combat as normal. A lot of gunfire coming from there. Kill them all. And this focus, Thaddeus, jump in there. Oop, that's a big one. Just pull back. You you could actually do something instead of just being a nuisance at a distance. Like I really do not get the force commander's uh, AI sometimes. Right away. Because he is set to fight in melee, and yet still sometimes will just uh, refuse to automatically go into melee when attacked. That's not clear. And also, I should say this: loyalist is. <clears throat> Are the spacemen that served the Imperium? Yeah. Well, the Chaos are the traitors. Yeah. And it's gonna pull me. The book they based the uh, the religion of the uh, of the Emperor. Um. Which one against his will. Was ba based on a book they found on nowhere was written. Why were the Primarchs of all the traitor legions? And where was he wrote it before it turned? Yeah. Marcus, welcome your brothers with some hot potatoes. Avatus, hot lead. You get in there. Okay, turn that off so it doesn't waste energy. Okay, what? Uh, there he is. The <laughs> Yeah, we're dealing with Alephus here. We're, yep. Alephus the Inheritor, aspiring champion of chaos. So good to see you all again, Blood Ravens. I remember well our sparring on Cronus. Tell Captain Sully that his old friend Eliphas is anxious to see him again. 
And uh, you were talking about Chaos Dreadnoughts? Get out of suppression. I actually wonder if he would react to the Abyss. Okay. Uh, we should be, yeah, this should be rather easily done despite our lack of anti-vehicle material. Because we have, we still have the melter bombs and the power fist here. Bad years, pull back. Okay, the flamethrower won't do much against this thing, but it'll at least annoy the one inside it. Holy! Okay, yeah, everyone focus fire. Now with this. Yep. Okay, for a moment I thought he brought someone down, but it was one of the extras. The insurgents are in full retreat. You have more than an insurgency on your hands, Governor Dorosa. This is a full-fledged heresy. Yeah, now things are getting serious. Victory is but a prelude to the next battle. Because the last time we dealt with Chaos Forces, an entire planet went to hell. Yeah. Okay. The Melter Gun, two-handed. Uh, Proximity boosts damage, okay. Assault pattern Vulcan, attacking a, uh, firing a scorching gout of molecularly agitated heat. Melter guns can cut through any armor at close range and can be used while on the move. The eff effect, efficacy, what, how is, the heck is that supposed to be said? Efficacy, efficacy, yeah, they're efficiency. Yeah, it, it's, yeah, that's what it's. That's an alternate word for it, but it's the very weird. It's this is a very weird alternate word for it. The, their efficiency drops off sharply with range, however. Okay, yeah, Thaddeus got his ass I run know. over. <laughs> but yeah, the fact that we are dealing with chaos is not going to have anyone here happy with us or well with yeah. circumstances. No, well, let's I've see. seen lots of video about recently about bits of the scary factions and scaries, and do you mean to wonder that single place came chaos and resource for well one of the reasons is that you can't trick a demon with, by negotiating with them and all that. But you mean yeah it There's no it's tricking like trying those. to negotiate with a brick wall. Yeah, it's going to fall on top of you anyways. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. There's Nimble no last machine with them at all. And let's see. <laughs> Astartes Mark 7B last cannon fitted with gyro stabilizers to allow quicker deployment and recovery. Heavy bolter of resilience. Astartes Mark 4C heavy bolter featuring a master crafted stabilizer and assembly that makes the wielder highly resistant to being knocked back. Okay. A lot less interesting descriptions. The blighted bolter. Now that's an interesting description, especially with how much, uh, how big of a, a cart this one has. Let's see. Improved defensive bonus while in cover. Greatly increases damage in melee. Plus one strength. Donate this item to receive an upgraded version. Reduced range. Recovered from the fighting near the capital city of Cronus and bearing the, uh, bearing the seal of that planet, this bolter was found among the carnage wrought as the Imperial Guard defied the Emperor's finest space marines and were put to death. Many prayers of sanctity and rituals of absolution have purified his mighty weapon, but those who fought against their own kind are loath to recall that black day. Okay. Uh, plasma gun. Locator beacon... And yeah, now we have also this here, the Carapace of Pain, a corrupting item. So yeah, you can gain corruption from failing certain objectives or doing certain things the easy way, simply put. But you can also gain it by using corrupted items. Let's see. Oh. Reforged from the armors recovered from the Alpha Legion on Tartarus, this power armor still resonates with their foul treasons. 
feeds on melee attackers energy and health. And yeah, they melt a gun. This, this is very grave news. We cannot allow the forces of chaos to overrun our recruiting worlds. The traitor legions must be based on planet Aurelia, Commander. Return there immediately and hunt them down. Oh dear. What was that to say? I forgot what I was to say there. Mm. Alright, and... we are not going the chaos route, are we? Nope. Hmm. And it seems that we did get some corruption just from being near all of the jackasses. Because we we opened the gate, we didn't destroy them. If we had done that, we would have gotten more corruption. But yeah, we need to be careful with this. Because there are different endings depending on how corrupted everyone is. Up to, uh, well... Just complete and total corruption. Once a character comes to here, at the end of the bar, it's 24 corruption. Uh, there's no going back. You can still go up and down a bit from performing redeeming uh, side objectives or using redeeming items, which does come with uh, negatives for, well, penance, like the negative armor rating. But you can recover until you get to here. Oh dear. Now, let's see. Let's up your health more. Okay, Avatus. Yeah. Let's do that. We'll be useful for defensive missions. Thaddeus gets Thunderous Assault. Okay, jump and teleport range increase, and Assault Jump now stuns enemies on arrival. Very useful for him, since he is a bit of a glass cannon. Not as glass as Jonah, but still. And let's actually give you a bit of will and energy. Let's see. Jonah has information about the effects of warp energies on the Blood Ravens. Commander, I fear the traitor's foul warp energies may have affected us. Affected us, how, librarian? The corrupting influence of chaos is a powerful thing. Even the briefest encounter can stain a soul. We are no traitors. Perhaps not, Cyrus, but corruption can be subtle. Each step along the path may seem insignificant, but together they lead into darkness. When facing the minions of the warp, no decision is without consequence. Okay, I, I don't actually remember if this happens on every mission that you can gain a bit of corruption. But I think it might be more of an example here. But we'll see how much that will actually well, be a thing. She has something to say. Yeah. Also here, Elephus the Inheritor. An old enemy has reappeared among the Black Legion forces attacking the sector. Elephus the Inheritor led the Chaos forces on Cronus, where Davian Thule defeated him during the so-called Dark Crusade. Well, that makes it easy to find out which expansion he was from, huh? Uh, no one we did not recognize him. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I do wonder if... I'd have to check if... If Davian Thule became a named character then, or was just another nameless uh, commander or something back in there, or and he just only got a personality in this, well, in the previous game. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. Really, Venice Rebellion stand and revealed as outright heresy. The force of the Red Black Legion have appeared, leading the Vandus heretics. These traitor space marines will stop at nothing to destroy the Blood Ravens and all they defend. Vandus and Black Legion forces have been tracked to a large industrial facility on Aurelia. These iceworks have apparently has served as the base for these heretics since Aurelia re-emerged from the warp. Imperial Guard forces are launching an attack, and you shall as well. Okay. Commander, thank you. I can barely believe the rebels would align themselves with the forces of chaos. Believe it. Yes. Sergeant Avatus is right. Denial only aids the enemy. We have recovered records from the rebels that portray the location of their main base. It is on planet Aurelia. House Vandis has been operating there since the earliest days of the Tyranid invasion. I am dispatching troops to Aurelia immediately. 
Time to eradicate the enemy's safe haven and end this heresy. Now you are speaking sense, Governor. Okay, I, I think there might be a little bit of a plot hole there, since it was only recently that the planet re-emerged, and the... Uh, yeah, the... <clears throat> Unless she's speaking about when it before it emerged from the warp, it wouldn't be it would be impossible for Veldus or Vandus uh, troops to base there because, like I said, it was a year ago that the invasion was, and it was only in well probably days, weeks, or months since uh, Aurelia reappeared. Actually, it's been literally four days, or three days, but whatever. It's been really short time. So I'm thinking either that's a minor plot hole or she is talking about that the Space Marines were already basing there and that Vandus just joined in with it. It's probably that. Maybe. Okay, uh, let's so see. It might be that they were only discovered recently from this that uh, they were Sidewick here also ever since he escaped uh, the planets. Uh, could be. He's gonna explain why he let in so some mess. He was a, he was already with chaos. No, let's see. May I also explain why they were stolen, brought ancient artifacts. Yeah. Uh, let me take a look. Yeah, that's this is the best gun we have at the moment. So these other ones we can just donate. I. I do wish there was a bit of a sword button, but oh well. Oh well, oh well. Let's see, 44, 60, can get rid of this. And yeah, it's very obvious which of these items are redeeming and corrupting. That I do like. Okay. The target has got a level from that. Yeah, let's keep going up this way. For just your freaking tankiness. Uh, Cyrus got a level. Uh, still don't really liking this, but it could be it could be useful with him drawing people away and into ambushes. Soft target. When Cyrus attacks a target and thus marks it, attacking that target will cause his allies to regain health and energy. That would be really useful against bosses. Very. Okay, and Jonah got a level. Let's give you this. Outbursts. Yeah, it releases a radial discharge. And that also got you the Tome of Fire. Ignite Soul. Yeah, let's take that as well. Okay, and you still have another point. Uh, let's do energy, since, well, he's a caster. He's going to need a lot of energy. Okay. Now, back to the... The back to the ice rock. Question. Hmm? Answer. Is there a rock made of ice? But then, would it still be a rock? If it was fully ice, it would probably count more as a gigantic comet or something. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we were about trying to see if I could uh, mess with his brain there a bit. <laughs> okay. Jonah has information about the gear recovered at Angel Forge. Commander, I have taken stock of the items recovered from the battlefield. I fear some of them resonate with very troubling psychic echoes. I advise caution with these items, Commander. Yeah, that's just speaking about corrupted items. Let's see. Commander, now is the time to strike back. The Black Legion is operating from a well-fortified industrial facility on planet Aurelia. You must break into that complex and defeat the traitors within. Okay, what do we know about this facility? It is a geothermal power station. House Vandis established it soon after planet Aurelia re-emerged from the warp. It appears to be the center of their dealings with the Black Legion. Hmm. Actually, thinking about it back again, it, it does, it typically takes quite a bit of time for news to even spread around in the, uh, <clears throat> in the Imperium. So it could have been that the planets re emerged like months ago or so, and that we only recently now got to it, which would explain why they have had time to make contact with the Space Marine, with the Chaos Marines on the planet. 
yeah. and establish this stuff? For, they said about they uh, he was been there since the Tyrian invasion. For but he escaped it, he bolted it, hmm. and apparently now makes sense why he was making such a troubling issue for the Space Marines uh, until they escaped. Yeah, he was intentionally sabotaging for them. Yeah, maybe could just be that greed well led him to ally with the Chaos Marines. But the end result is all the same. The governor is going to die. Ex-governor, you mean? Yeah. Uh, what about defenses? Expect to face heavily entrenched Black Legion troops. Imperial Guard forces have already deployed to establish a beachhead. They report that the enemy has raised a void shield to protect key areas of the station. Bring that shield down and purge the facility, Commander. Okay. Well, our objectives are to eliminate the Chaos Forces, but if we allow the Imperial Guard base to be destroyed, it will corrupt all the deployed squads. As you know, can notice here, it is only the ones who were deployed who gained corruption. Anyone who is sitting on the sideline, except for Davian Thule, since he is immune, will not gain corruption. And we're going to get a last cannon from this. I'm noticing that the... The inventory, the cards for these items are a little bit offline. Not offline. The the inside is a little bit off. That little bar at the top, that's just the background behind it. And there was at least one item I yeah, when we were. Let's see. You can even see it here. There's a little bit of a misalignment, like one or two pixels wide, where it just doesn't fit correctly for some reason. Hmm. Yes, conspiracy perhaps. <laughs> yeah, I don't even remember these, so hmm, maybe it could be that we're playing Chaos Rising through the base game and not like I was originally playing it through the nor through the direct executable. Maybe or maybe I just overlooked or forgot stuff like that. Anyways, the facility is defended by large numbers of enemy infantry. Enemy have taken up positions in many hardened structures and bunkers. Okay, for that we have the flamethrower and the grenades. No mention of vehicles, so Thaddeus can take a back seat. I think we should bring Cyrus out again. Because he can help with keeping heads down, and he has grenade launchers now. And Tarkus has something to say. A warning about the Chaos Space Marine Elephas. Commander. If that truly was the Elephas we faced on Cronus, it was. Then we must expect a trap. Elephas earned a reputation for deception on Cronus many times over. Tarkus is correct. Elephas is a dangerous foe, but we still must take the facility. Okay. Yeah, Chaos Champions have a habit of returning from the dead after a few centuries or millennia, if the Chaos Gods like them. Okay, uh, Thaddeus, get benched, Cyrus, time for you to play again. Uh, how is your gear? You are keeping the grenade launcher for now, I think. You already have better armor. Uh, let's see, let's give you your death... <laughs> the demolition packs back and I actually don't know if how useful these will be since they're typically good for ambushing they can kill allied troops caught in the blast radius also another good reason to put them away hmm let's give you a smoke grenade pack uh, which force enemy units to fall back and grant a defensive bonus to allies. Okay, let's actually give those a try, if I remember to try them out. Oh, bloody heck, you look like a... <laughs> okay, maybe calling you saying you look very powerful at the moment this may be a bit overstatement, but <laughs> so many skulls, so much gold. <laughs> uh... uh... Uh, how how does it feel to be covered in so much bling? <laughs> Very, sh it feels shiny. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you got shiny stuff. I got gummy worms. 
Okay, corrupting and redeeming mm, mission conditions. Redeeming. Missions in Chaos Rising have special conditions that can either increase or reduce a squad's corruption. Conditions that can add corruption are marked with a special Chaos Star icon and list the actions that will result in corruption for all deployed squads. Redeeming conditions, which can reduce corruption, are marked with an Imperial Sigil and likewise list the conditions to fulfill. These conditions have no impact on mission completion. Following them is entirely optional. Okay, and I think most mission completions will give you a little bit of redemption. Those guardsmen are up to their necks again. Traitors with heavy weapons have them pinned. We need to eliminate those chaos positions. Bah, we coddle them at every opportunity. Shut up, Navitus. Okay, Tarkus, grenades, Avatus, keep their heads down, Cyrus, uh, go, go deliver a package. Oh dear, the mayhem and... Yeah, the combo you have was disappointing. Like, they're not bad, just... Very mild taste. Okay. Marcus, grenades. The first one either missed or never. <laughs> he delivers it late. Okay. I was not eating candy again. No, man, I haven't eaten candy for. Well. Maybe for a year now. Okay. Oh, you don't run ahead. Blood Ravens. Good to have you here, Commander. Report, Guardsman. Yes, sir, of course. The enemy is heavily entrenched in holding the entirety of the facility. From what we can tell, we're facing large numbers of Chaos Space Marines as well as Vandus heretics. The enemy's raised some sort of powerful energy shield around the central portion of the facility. Auspex scans show a power station to the north, Commander. The shield must be drawing energy from there. We will take that station then. We've managed to establish a field command here, but we've yet to push any further. Okay. So yeah, we have to go push up there. But if I remember correctly, they will keep getting attacked here. So we'll need to be careful with that. Incoming! Damn mortar battery! And also that. Commander, coordinates are being relayed through a communications array north of here. The traitors are using that array to guide the artillery. If we take it from them, we can silence those guns. Won't well, last long unless you do, Commander. Move up and hold that position! So, hold yeah, we need to take that out if we don't want to risk corruption. Tarkus. Okay, Tarkus didn't throw the grenade like I asked him. Oh, he went the long way around. <laughs> Dumbass. Okay, both of you pull back. Cyrus, uh, you can help out here a little bit more. Okay, I thought he would just throw the grenade up like this, but no. <laughs> Tarkus just have to be an idiot for a bit. Actually, throw a smoke grenade here to support them. Nope, Abatus. Parkus. Get that grenade going. Then turn back. I think. Okay. Right. If you hit your spot a wheel, corrupt world. Wait, what? Yeah, that's the fail, that's the fail, uh, not, not the fail, that's the side objective. Like, basically, if this gets destroyed by those mortars, we do oh. get corruption. Luckily, it is sturdy enough. Okay. So, let's just push through here. 
and take out those mortars which are over here, according to our intel. Oh, that's a bunch over there. Arcus, send them a gift. How are you suppressed? <laughs> I, th I think the big gun was going after Cyrus for some reason. <laughs> Another grenade. There we go. Okay, and keep moving on. Okay. Oh, now I see how it works. Okay. Yeah, whenever those mortars come down, well, it's going to damage the bunker. And the flip is of how much health the bunker has left. The lower the yep. number, the worse it is. Yep. Actually, I want to try something. Can Cyrus effectively clear buildings with a grenade launcher? Doesn't look like it. Okay, Tarkus, you do the work. Okay, so yeah, the grenade launcher is just primarily anti grenade and disruption. Time to emerge. Grenade anti grenade. Anti infantry. Anti grenade. Right anti -infantry. There we go. What better? You said anti grenade. <laughs> okay, you support Cyrus. You just gun down whatever in your line of sight. Oh dear. Banisher of Knights. Okay. Okay, you get out of there. Emperor, preserve us. And yeah, we probably saw this both coming. The Black Legion has summoned demons to their side. You get Tarkus. Yep, a blood crusher. Yeah, but this is out of energy. Okay. Incoming. Okay, there we go. And yeah, demons are going to be a nuisance like they were in the previous game. But at least we should have more ways to get rid of them. Yeah. What the hell? Mm -hmm. What else can the elephant the inheritor gonna be? Wait. Elephant the inheritor? <laughs> okay. God damn it! I was wondering you were gonna want to me say that uh, all this time. <laughs> but he said I did! Oh, bloody yeah. heck. Chapters recruit, stand ready. Oh, what the fuck? The chaos worker? I'm ready to uh, let's see, there's probably going to be one around here again. But I think that was their anti-tank unit. It... Okay, the heck happened there. It's raining. It's raining men. There is the communications array. Oh, damn it, I was too late. The retribution confirms that it's being used to call in artillery on the Imperial Guard. I was just used to do the sound here. Our ally is losing forces to enemy fire. Okay, they are managing to hold the line somewhat. Mm. They're suppressed, and once they're suppressed, they're as good as dead. Okay. Capture that. Give the Imperial Guard some, uh, a bit of a break. And I think that once that barrage, <laughs> once the constant bombarding stops, they probably will be able to just force them back eventually. Our main objective remains the power station up here. The array 
as ours, Commander. We should be able to feed those rebel gunners some of our own target data. Now we can give the Black Legion something to fear. Okay. Actually, let's do that right now. I see Elephas was correct. You blood ravens are persistent. Where is that coming from? Over the box, on our private channel. Who are you? I am Aragast of the Black Legion, pillager of a thousand worlds, champion of the Chaos Gods. I will tear this scepter from your chapter and sacrifice it to the Dark Gods. We beat back the Tyranids. You will fare no better. Empty bravado will not save you, stripling. Commander, this is a distraction. I can feel a dark ritual is underway. A temple. They have established a temple to the powers of chaos. We must destroy it. Then we will burn it to ash. Ally infantry okay, destroyed. yeah, we're going to see a lot more frequent uh, opposition during these missions. I think there's going to be a lot less uh, randomly gen- well, not randomly generated, but a lot less filler stuff on the sides. Okay. Okay, that's still standing here, but I think another barrage will help with that in a bit. Okay. Parkers, grenades. There. It is Danger Close, but I'm pretty sure Danger Close is the standard that the Imperial Guard lives by. Like you haven't yeah. lived a day in the Guard if, you're, if your Commissar hasn't thrown a grenade in your general direction. That tackle. Good, they, they got behind us. Okay. Hmm. I probably should have given these to Cyrus. Uh, there will. Ew. Speaking of Cyrus, pull back you. Hello. Everyone here, focus down that demon. Cyrus return. Avatus, pull away so we can fire. Yep. So we can fire, not going to melee, you old idiots. Okay. <laughs> Fly, you fool. Okay. I'm gonna find that one a little better. Just keep bombarding that. Oh. Uh oh. Okay, this one goes down a lot easier. And it seems that the Imperial Guard is still stuck with these bunkers here. You know, bunkers are supposed to protect against artillery, after all. If that's any good. Enemy located. Hmm. Oh, there's... Okay, the next bombardment is going to be a lot closer to our units. Okay, you capture that. Other than that, it seems that this position is good. Okay. Tactical Marines, tactical squad repositioning. Hostile movement up ahead, brothers. Okay, let them come to us. Because we don't want to deal with too many of them and the Dreadnought at the same time. How it is, focus fire. 
Cyrus, pull back. You get into the thick of it, you. <laughs> Okay. Now, I, I'm going to need to keep a better spread of weaponry amongst everyone. Like, if I'm if I'm giving Cyrus the, the grenade launcher, then Avatis is, just is getting explosives. To bring that void field down. Pull back. And Cyrus, where did... There you are. Okay, now everyone moving. Yeah, that works a lot. That works wonders to yeah, to soften them up, huh? Okay. Tarkus is going to give another eviction notice. Wait, what? Yeah, that was the cultists here, I, I think. Target eliminated. Cutting power to the void field. The target is now exposed. Okay, oh, and here is uh, Chaos Havocs. Okay, so... Uh, making a run for it? We're making a run for it. Commander, that relay did more than just transmit target coordinates. There's a recording. The actors codes for Battlefield Block. Use them to ambush my battle brothers like you did with the distress signal, and our agreement is over. What was that? Someone betrayed us! And the plot thickens. With blood. Okay. Now we need to go get rid of that temple. And there's a scout that's gone, so Cyrus move back a bit. Okay, these are a bit more resilient than the ones we found before. And again, these are level 20. Okay. You don't want to charge straight into the middle, because then everyone on the sidelines is going to come party as well. Yeah, they're summoning. The Black Legion has summoned demons to their side. I saw someone fill up a free wolf like the claim. Okay, you're, you're keeping that on speed down now, huh? I just haven't known for once uh, to be ready, but it's worth doing it. Heretics enacting some dark ritual. They summon demons, destroy them! Okay, I don't think we can actually kill them quick enough to get rid of, uh, to prevent the summons. Direct our wrath and rest not. There are still targets to engage. Actually, Avatus, get in there. there Cyrus, the you too. Parkers, move up. Oh, oh, they're continuously summoning here. Okay, it's not another unit. It's not another squad that gets sacrificed. And he went for a flight. Okay, no you lured him closer. Tarkas, get your. Are you frozen stuck or something? Okay, something will spawn him again. Okay, Targus is just frozen to the floor there. That's annoying. Okay, at least we can somewhat work here. Seriously, why are you unable to move? We'll have to work without him then, it seems. 
Okay, uh, these are Shrines of Chaos, which summon more of them. Okay. Move back. I think the only thing that needs to be destroyed is the temple here. Use another one of these. Also, bring down the pain double. immediately. Cyrus to Talon Alpha, emergency extraction. The enemy is destroying a key structure. Down. Zeal and fury are rewarded with victory. Seems we were too late to stop something. The heck? Okay. Killed the majority, everyone stayed up. Not on speed, but we're never good with speed on this, huh? Let's see, levels. Okay. I believe this flashing means that they have regained or redeemed themselves. Uh, let's see, anything new here? Just a bunch of basic stuff. It's just going to get sacrificed. Banisher of Night. Used by Davian Thule during the assault on the catacombs of Kronos, this mastercrafted plasma pistol is said to have blazed with unprecedented power as Captain Thule fired it at the unholy essence of the Nightbringer. Okay. And purification through pain. Receive extra damage when hit with ranged weapons. More susceptible to knockback, plus 50% chance to suffer knockback. Uh, offsets two points of corruption when equipped. Okay. Uh, feel the limitless pain of life, lest you be seduced by the comforts of death. With this oath, the Space, Marine's, uh, Space Marine wills his pain-dampening glance into partial dormancy, using the resulting agony to burn away thoughts of heresy. Yeah. Oh dear. to escape, Lord Aragast. Because it serves me, Alphas. If we kill them now, we waste the value of the traitor in their ranks. Your vengeance can wait. Of course, my lord. Of course. Now, prepare for the next battle. Victory of the Iceworks has stirred the enemy to further action, Blood Ravens. Black Legion forces are attacking our scouts on Calderas and pillaging our assets on Typhon. I am relaying details to your planetary display. You must put an end to these raids. Maintain absolute secrecy about this mission, Commander. Angelos out. Yeah. Look at it. Yeah, it's starting to crack. That can't be any good, huh? Yeah, that's horrible. Let's see. Aragast the Pillager. The leader of the Black Legion warband on Aurelia has revealed himself as Aragast the Pillager, the mighty Chaos Champion. Whether he has an agenda beyond simple, uh, simply conquest and slaughter remains to be seen. And yeah, there is a traitor among the Blood Ravens here. Let's see. Scouts in danger. Return from the dead. Tecmarie Martellus served with you throughout the Tyranid invasion. During the climactic battle, Martellus was aboard a Thunderhawk gunship supporting the Space Marines on the ground. The Tyranid Horde eventually overwhelmed the gunship. You thought him dead. But now he has returned, sending a call for help from Typhon. Yeah, he, he, it wasn't really outstated, uh, stated out loud during the finale of the, pre, of the main game. But yeah, the Thunderhawk that he was in was crashed. And uh, let's see. Oh. Massive tectonic activity has racked planet Aurelia, opening up huge fissures across its surface. This seems to be tied to the Black Legion's rituals at the Iceworks. Yeah. 
And there's something else here as well that we'll get access to. So yeah, we have a bit more than uh, three places to jump between. Now we have six. Oh, dear. Or actually, no, five, because there's also just the, uh, the overall sector updates. Okay, let's see. Yep, you are fully redeemed now. You can still have some corruption and still be considered uh, pure in the eyes of the Emperor here. It is only once you get past this point that uh, this changes, I believe. Corruption. Mm. Corruption. You have been redeemed, Helian. <laughs> okay. Um, Battle Cry now restores energy. I think we just keep going down one lane each, for the most part, still. Uh, Avatus wishes to hear the message you discovered on Aurelia. Let us hear that transmission again, from the Array. Yes, definitely. We have recovered some additional audio, but the speaker's identity is still hidden. This transmission includes the access code for Battlefield Vox. I will not be party to the murder of full blood ravens. No. There is a traitor in the chapter. We now know how these heretics lured us to Aurelia with a false distress signal. And how that chaos dog could taunt us over our Vox channel. I will kill this turncoat with my bare hands. Assuming we can uncover who he is. Yeah, that's going to be a plot line. Let's see, Tarkus. But, uh, so we see a conviction that your yeah, that your cause is just briefly make a targeted ally immune to damage. Alternatively, cow a targeted enemy with the same conviction, stunning them. Okay. Avatus there. Entrench. Increasing damage the longer he remains stationary or within the same structure. Okay. And the last one he has here is pitiless. Regular infantry reduced to less than 20% health are killed outright by Avatus' attacks. Heavier units suffer additional damage instead. Okay, let's go for that, since that would also be really useful on bosses and such. And yeah, just go down this line still. Flanking expert, significantly medium, yeah, when he is away from allies. I, I guess he doesn't need to be too far away. Since, well, it's literally called flanking allies. I just wonder what the actual distance would be, though. Uh, let's see. 76, 107. Yeah, let's give you back. Let's give you a sniper rifle again. And let's see. It looks like everyone has been, well, cleansed of the corruption. Or actually, no. You still have one of 24. Cyrus, you have zero. Okay, so Thaddeus didn't get uh, redeemed because he wasn't present during the last mission. So we'll have to bring him along to clean his soul a bit more. Okay. And yeah, let's see. Defend the Astro Astronomic Array and rescue the Blood Raven Scouts. Yeah, now we need to go jumping around again between Calderas, Typhon Primaris, and Meridian. So, let's see. Meridian has an optional target. Okay, active distress call. You must travel to the selected planets in order to deploy a mission. This would give us the Tome of Quickening for Jonah. Here we have priority targets. Okay, that would give us Terminator Lightning Claws, but we can't actually use Terminator Armor at the moment. And... Yeah, here we get a purple. Okay. The Blade of the Unrelenting. Now this is where this is where our tech marine is, so let's actually go get him so he can get us working on repairing our our junk. Yeah, I think we take the one that's uh, have a few days left, then we take the other one. Yeah. Commander, Governor DeRosa here. Vandis and Black Legion forces have taken mm. Spire Legis. They have erected artillery batteries and emplacements that make a large-scale assault impossible. We could use any aid you can provide, Commander. Okay, I'm getting a bit tired of the constant up and down in the volume. Yeah, I think that's more of the game than our settings. Yeah. Hmm. You'd think stuff like that would have been patched out, but... Hmm. Maybe it is because I'm running the game through the 
the exe the, 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 through the the executable file of the base game and not from the uh, from the well <laughs> the, the standalone uh, version of it hmm it must be something that was sold with the attachment of blood raven scouts sergeant priam led a group of initiates to investigate an intermittent positioning signal emanating from the depths of the calderas desert they expected to recover the remains of brothers lost during the tyranid war they found the black legion laying in wait we cannot allow the chaos legions to destroy them okay I I did a dumb here. This is the desert planet. This is not where <laughs> this is not where we fought the hive. That's uh <laughs> is the <laughs> the jungle planet. Yeah, so that was a bit of an oops. That's to go rescue the scouts. But yeah, I want to go get Mar Martellus first. I think if we get him, he will repair our terminator armor, which also explains why we get we well, terminator equipment. It comes from Techmarine Martellus. We thought him lost in the Tyranid War, but he survived. He needs your help, Commander. Okay. Techmarine Martellus, to any Blood Ravens capable of receiving, I am transmitting from the Astronomical Ray Station in the Typhon Islands. Orc looters have been a recurring threat since my arrival. However, at dawn this day, I detected a graver threat. Chaos Space Marines. I fear they want the array for themselves. I risk damaging the array by sending this message, but I require support. Mars and Terra, power levels are drop. Okay, suppressive and area of effect weapons will aid you in defending the array. Cluster mines, remote detonators, and the locator beacon can bolster your defense. And yeah, we need to rescue him and defend the array. Permanent damage to the array corrupts deployed squads. Remember, that thing is one of a kind. And yeah, they just do not know how to repair it. So we need to keep that thing intact. Okay. Yeah, well, they can repair it. Probably is they can't build a new one if it's completely destroyed. Yeah. Or at least permanent damage is caused from certain parts that they don't know how to make anymore, being reduced to nothing. Yeah. Let's bring Sewell along here. Okay, I, I want to say something, but forgot what. Let's see. Oh, hold on, why do you still have corruption? Shouldn't that have been... Okay, it seems that only the Force Commander loses corruption from completing just the missions for some reason. Okay. Hmm, we'll have to be careful yeah. with getting rid of that then. Let's see. I don't think the flamethrower will help much here. Avatus, you bring out the Golden Fury of Terra. Uh, set the fire plasma uh, bolts charged with the light of soul itself. This weapon has seen has, has seen service in over a hundred crusades. Never has it failed its wielder. That should help with disrupting. Oh. And it gives plus two on the range discipline. Okay, and 20% range damage. All right. Uh, any better armor for hey. you? Look Let's... at the gun. Yeah, it's a big one. I think this one also has a bit of gold accenting, whereas the other ones are just completely gray, I think. A, a bit? A bit? It's ooh, hello. Available expendable items. Okay. Contemplation of the Codex. Donate to gain experience. One use only. Only the selected squad is effective. Yeah, affected. Intensive study of the Codex Astartes allows the Space Marine to gleam some of the wisdom of the great warriors who preceded him. Okay, I think this. Is, I think they put this in, in case you had any squad who was far behind in levels. And I'm actually tempted to give it to Thule. And first gift of the Artificers. Donate to receive unique item dependent on the character you have selected when you give it. The commander gets a unique Thunder Hammer. Avatus gets a Missile Launcher. Uh, or, or, okay. 
I, I'm guessing that the other option is for when they are e equipped with uh, Terminator armor or something. Since it also says Power Fist, Assault Cannon. Yeah, that, that's that's Terminator equipment. Okay. Uh, Cyrus gets a sniper rifle, Jonah a four sword, Tark is a plasma gun, Thaddeus a lightning claw, and Thule gets a multi melta. Which is basically, well, the melta gun, but vehicle sized and with more than one barrel. Hmm. Ooh, I, I hope we get to see that for. Yeah, we're probably, I'm not sure if I've seen any odd picture of what the heck happens when you fire a multi melta. Yeah, let's put the single melta Holy. on uh, Tarkus at least. Because we'll be seeing a lot of heavy infantry, I'm pretty sure. But. Vulcan. But, oh dear. Okay, we so have so a, many extra flamethrowers. This is a version of uh, a weapon that was once extremely common, but no longer is. Yeah, let's see, 24, Vulcanite 13. Weapons. I think Vulcan mm. is a more powerful multi melta weapon. Probably. Let's see, left hand of the just. And that's a two handed one. This is 75, Banisher of Night. Hey, let's banish you to this. <laughs> let's banish you to the librarian. Uh, up your health. And I think. Yeah, let that should be good. We have an urgent. There we go. Tech Marine Martellus. Tech Marines are space marines who are also members of the Tech Priests of Mars. They are uniquely skilled at maintaining the mighty war machines of the chapter. Martellus served with Commander Nihilian throughout the Tyranid invasion. During the climactic battle, Martellus was aboard a Thunderhawk gunship supporting the space marines on the ground. The Tyranid heard this is basically the same as we read before. Okay, thought Martellus had died in the crash. Martellus, are you receiving? Sergeant Tarkas, thank the Omnissiah. I am defending the array, but the traitor legions are here. Retribution, prepare to provide close support. Okay. Get moving. Oh, Again, a map we've learned. seen before. <laughs> Go ahead. Lot angels are guns. very close with the the mechanicus. Angels or ravens? Uh, raven. I mean ravens. We just call no them ravens, ravens instead. <laughs> just call them ravens instead of blood ravens. That's going to make it a lot easier. Yeah, but yeah, the Ravens here are all very close with the uh, uh, Tech Priest, but they both value knowledge a lot. Yeah, since the Space Marine, since the Blood Ravens have almost nothing on their history, what little they have and whatever they can find, well, <laughs> they will value more than anything. Okay, just keep pushing forward through Martellus. We have some champions here, it seems. I'm not exactly sure what the difference is here between... other than the icons. So we'll mow the lawn a bit, will you? Oh. <laughs> Martellus! We must revive him. Okay. Yeah, he's not fully dead, though. But, yeah, it was sort of to be expected since, well, he was standing here alone. Okay. Pick him up. And someone go capture this. Okay, I don't... Give my thanks, Commander. 
I am glad to see you again. We had thought you lost when your Thunderhawk went down, Martellus. How did you survive? A story for another time, Tarkus. The heretics will surely try for the array again any moment. We cannot stay here defending this relic for all eternity, Tech Marine. Agreed, but we cannot leave the valuable data in its cogitator for the enemy to take. Strike Cruiser, this is Tech Marine Martellus. Deploy power generators in the following coordinates. Okay. I don't know, remember how long it takes to defend all of this. But this is probably going to be the last mission for today. Oh yeah, I see you now. I just looked at the time. Ooh, pardon? Good. Now that pardon. the army is powered, I can initiate a cogitation transfer right to secure the records. Just keep the enemy from destroying those generators. Yeah, they, this is what I mean. They will actively protect and collect as much info as possible. Okay. Oi, Yumi's! This place belongs to the Orcs! Greenskin looters. A fight on two fronts, then. Uh, yeah, of course, the orcs have to get in the way, huh? I like to do the loot and orcs are using a gate to access the complex. We should seal it. The greenskins will just go around, Cyrus. Exactly. Directly into the traitor space marines. Attack to get to that position, brothers. And that is how uh, Cyrus is so effective. The Yumi's don't close the gate! Then go around the other way, you kids! And kill every Yumi you see! <laughs> yes, there's another thing about the Blood Ravens. They will try to outsmart their enemies. Yeah, I believe most of the other squ chapters will uh, be a bit more brute force about their <laughs> their ways. Yeah, they'll be used tactics. But uh, the Blood Runners will go a step further to make sure that they have the advantage. And I just realized I forgot to bring along the repair rights. A lot of all hill! Okay, we'll just have to be careful with Thul. And yeah, there's the orcs walking in on matters. Okay. They are in a storage area a short distance away. If possible, we should recover these items before they're looted by the orcs. Okay, redemption opportunity. Yeah, the question that is a problem though, since we'd have to push all the way up here, meanwhile leaving these positions undefended. So, yeah, I don't think I'll be going for that. Also, actually, no, let's not put you in there. Okay. I don't remember if we need to keep all of these around. Or if we just need one of the generators to survive. Okay. He's keeping that side under control. Avatus, reposition. Walking cat with the world it's the one thingy. I must tend to one of the damaged generator space marines. Provide cover. Ah, okay, so he will repair them if possible. Okay. I just guess we don't have, we can't let all of them go down at the same time. 
Tarkas, go deal with them. Yeah. Oh, some power into the array's capacitor, Nave. Discharging it will slow the enemy, but will severely damage the array. Using this pulse could mean losing the array for good. You prepare? Yeah. Enemy destroyed. Let's not uh, do that. Orders for us. Tactical squad. Okay, Zul is healing rapidly from his auto repair. Okay. Oh yeah, I I do. Avatus, target. And and the demon. Yep, and another dreadnoughts. Though I think that bombardment is going to miss. Oh, this is also something that is different. These actually have locational armor. So if you manage to get a flank on them, you can deal increased damage. So in this case, it probably mean the weakest focus on the back of the that, that tank. Yep. Yeah, now we've got another issue to deal with, as if we didn't have enough already. Go back, Tarkus. Plans <laughs> right? Plague Marines. Oh, no! Yeah, disease marines. And in this case, it's a plague champion. So, uh, oh. let's go make him feel welcome with a <laughs> orbital barrage. Miracle followers. Okay, Aratus pull back to regroup. You just. Keep on the pressure on this guy. Okay, if we hadn't diverted the orcs, it probably would be a lot easier to go grab these, but uh, damn it. Go. Oh. Yeah, we also need to keep an eye out for those since he's sending around far spray. So we'll pull back. We don't want two of our squad to be down. That leaves only Avatus in combat. And the Plague Marine is babbling, but he is so he is so choked up with all the violence that it's practically impossible to understand what the hell he's saying. I can trust it if you want. Yeah. Okay, Tarkas, grab the commander. That should keep him stuck there a bit longer. Actually, yes, okay. Oh wait, there's no orcs! I can get up to now! Okay, you stop for a moment and pull back. Can we actually... I believe... Let's go take a look. I, I think as long as the champion is alive, the mission will continue. I don't know what he'll actually do. Okay, a good thing to send... Uh, it's a weird boy. A, an orc spellcaster. This might actually work, just playing the delay tactic. Because he, he, is, he is just being a nuisance over here. Okay, they destroyed one generator. I'm guessing... Yeah. Ooh. Quickly heal. And there goes the weird boy. I think. Yeah. Boom. I think it's actually the first time I've managed to do that. Okay. Everyone... Get out. 
you get out the power washers, like clean this guy off the planets. Ugh, that's what the... Yeah, they're called Plague Marines for a reason. Okay. Hellfire round should do the trick. Pestilence Pure. Uh, not even the deepest Tyranid hive was as foul as that scum. Indeed, Avatus. Commander, Cogitator recovery is complete. We can safely leave this place. Now you can tell us the story of your survival, Martellus. None can stop the crew. Yeah, he, yeah, he's he's been surviving on the surface of the planet here for an entire year. And a bit more probably. Okay. Carry the lightning claws. <laughs> Killed everything. Almost everyone stayed up, and of course we get the typical three out of five on speeds. Oh, and yep, Tarkus and Avatus have been redeemed fully. Which means that uh, I believe Cyrus and Thaddeus still have some corruption that needs to be dealt with. Okay. Basic stuff. Pestilence pure. Let's see. Corrupting item. Suppression and resistance. 15 melee skill, which is Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a different flamer. Okay. Foolishly taken as a trophy by one of the Crimson Fist veterans who boarded and scuttled the great Death Guard battleship Pestilence, this foul weapon infected its captor over the following decades. He would not be the last loyal Space Marines to fall under its, uh, yeah, Space Marine to fall under its sway. This weapon fires a stream of toxic ooze, poisoning and choking its victims. Yeah. And yeah, Terminator oh. Lightning Claws. Terminator's pattern, larger version of the infantry lightning claw. These paired talents allow their wielder to slash through infantry in short order. And yeah, the way that redeeming and corrupting items work is that you gain you gain as much corruption or redemption as the number per per deployment with it. Oh, the more you use it, the worse it gets. Yeah. Thank you for your timely intervention, Commander. I will initiate the repair rights for the items you have recovered. In particular, I shall restore our Terminator armor. And yeah, that is why we want him quickly. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, Tarkus and Avatus have things to say. A suggestion about the enemy commander from Tarkus. Eliphas has yet to show himself again. He must be planning something. That heretic is too dangerous by half. I thought he died during the Cronus campaign. As did I. I saw him torn to ribbons. How does he yet live? Souls are both playthings and currency in the warp. Eliphas may have died in the flesh, only to have his soul bartered among demons. It seems they restored his body when it suited them. More likely, his death was a deception. A mask for his escape from Cronus. There was no deception. In either case, it speaks of Eliphas's power. Tarkas is correct to worry. Yeah, like I said earlier, chaos, uh, chaos champions that are powerful enough or amusing enough can get revived by uh, the forces of chaos, or the chaos gods more specifically. Yeah. And Avatus has oh, something yeah. to ask Martellus. Just how did you survive, Martellus? Yes, a good question. As you may recall, I was aboard a Thunderhawk during the climactic battle with the Tyranids. I also recall it being blown from the sky. A Thunderhawk is a resilient craft. Instead of destroying us outright, the Tyranid attack sent us into a desperate dive into the jungle. My brother Pilot used all his experience to guide us into the highlands, where the infestation was less severe. He did not survive the crash landing. I was left alone. No transmitter survived, and my own cybernetic enhancements were severely damaged. It took me months to successfully enact the repair rights to regain my mobility. I spent the rest of the past year battling my way through to the astronomical ray. Your perseverance does the chapter proud, Martellus. 
Perhaps. But I am glad to be in the confines of a mighty strike cruiser once more. Okay, yeah, it is really hard to kill a space marine. Now, before we yeah, before we go look for someone to raid, let's put a few more points around. And yeah, yellow means that they've they've lost corruption. Or flashing yellow means that they've lost corruption. Flashing red means gained corruption. And uh, like I let's see, this one, the blighted power armor with the negative armor rating gives plus one redemption. And the flamer here, the pestilence spewer, gives plus three. So if I require, if I were to equip that uh, character, they would gain two corruption per mission that they were deployed on. Though this one already has a, this one has a, a corruption requirement. Okay. But can we even donate it? Uh, I'm not even sure if they'd want it, but let's try it in a second. Well, there. yeah, I doubt that we will use the corrupted weapons and armor. There, Thaddeus got a level, so you've been going down, so let's give you that. Let's see if we even can, yeah. Okay, we can, and they give quite a bit of experience as well. Uh, Thul, there you get Call to Arms. Thul may call his brothers to his side. After a brief delay, all incapacitated squads revive and fall back to Thul's position. If Thul is vulnerable, this ability occasionally triggers when he kills an enemy. Okay. And he... Well, and what is Seed currently? Venerable. So yeah, that's, a, that's useful. Uh, let's see. Whose mighty strike ability is charged with the hate of all of mankind's enemies as nearby foes are stunned for a short duration. Would be useful, but we're using him on, bleh, on ranged more. So the other point is going there. Cyrus, let's keep going down there. And Jonah, let's keep going down your will discipline. So when we use you, you have more than plenty of power to spend. And it seems that we picked up another four swords somewhere. Sword of the Cordisier. Let's see. Chance to stun, knockback resistance, and half 50% chance to knockback the target. Okay. For centuries, only the most promising Blood Raven uh, Codicifers or Codiciers have been entrusted with the use of this four sword. Powerful warp energies writhe around it, amplifying the wielder's psychic attack, such that it has that it will knock back and stun enemies. Okay. I, I have no idea what a codiciar is. And we also got, yep, yeah, <laughs> same here. We also got a. Or is this more because he had the level cap or something? Anyways, mantle of the codiciar. The crystals of this psychic hood amplify the negative emotions of its wearers, of its wearer, in such a way that they will often discharge themselves violently upon an attacker. Fifty percent melee and range damage. Does, that sounds more like it would give a radial blast, but it doesn't actually. I guess I could see it is a kind of psycho rank or something. Yeah. And there are some items here that we haven't read off. But I'll leave those be for now. And it seems we got our Cyclone missile launchers back. And Orbs of the Omnissiah uh, disables weapons, uh, not weapons, not vehicles temporarily. Replenished by Grenadier supplies. Okay. Grenades received from the Tech Priests of Mars, which temporarily disable vehicles caught in the blast. Okay, would be useful when we face more vehicle heavy missions. Okay. But for now. Uh, yeah, I, the Elder are up to shit again. Okay. But for now, let's save and return here. And yeah, the things are getting into motion quickly now, huh? Yeah. Holy. Okay. Let's exit and go look for someone to raid. Uh, let's see. Da, da, da. Let me change the screen share. There and there. Twitch, live, there. Okay, let's see. 
Nico is online doing some art. Then we have Schwalbe making, or not making, playing Dark Woods. Jackson Sam is playing Deep Rock Galactic. Isaiah Rozier is playing Fear and Hunger 2. That's the stream timer going off. Pexicool is playing the Dark Pictures Anthology, Little Hope. Um, yeah, from what I've heard and seen of those games myself, they are rather hit and miss. Like, some of them are really good, like The Quarry and uh, Until Dawn. But others, like Little Hope and the one with uh, the boats, uh, from what I've seen of those, people just do not give an absolute crap about either of those. Yeah, for uh, and the boat, yeah. I, I don't know for you, okay, what kind of ghost is it? What kind of supernatural is it? No, everyone was basically drugged. Yeah, because of a nerve agent or something. Yeah, and that uh, was... Basically, rather... it's a dream, but... Yeah, it basically, it, it's a dream trope, and no, most people do not like that trope at all. Yeah, so I can say what people did is like that. Then there's the one where the had a vampire, this apparently was an alien, but that one actually kind of worked. Yeah, that, I, in its that one was... Yeah, that one was liked because it was just plain fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's <laughs> see. Jimmy McGinger is playing Crosscode, but I don't want to get... I don't want to get... I don't want to risk any spoilers on that game until we get to stream it together with Liz. Uh, yeah, next, we too. have I'm a Flanker, who is playing Crusader Kings, uh, Kings 3. And last but not least, we have Halloween, who is playing Stalker Anomaly again. Okay, so we pick any of those, or should we look them on the recommended? I keep seeing Iggy Maid here show up. I, I, it has been a while since we've taken a look at them, but that cheese stick of them was really annoying me. Cheese? Yeah, like they, they are a goblin who has, or were a goblin at least, who were absolutely obsessed with cheese. Uh, let's see. We have someone playing Gotham Knights, someone playing form, uh, Final Fantasy XIV, Binding of Isaac, Baldur's Gate, just chatting, and Hell Divers. Okay. Uh, yeah. You see anyone interesting among here, or shall I take a pick? Uh, I'll let you take a pick here. Uh, let's see. It's been a bit since we've raided Swall Bay, I think last time they were playing darkwood as well then let me double check yeah the server is muted or not the server the browser is muted so copy again this stupid face on uh, facial recognition auto uh, you know, car ad or something i don't know what it's about but it keeps popping up but i well i don't care about it anyway so why would i even want to know what it's about it's just yeah, annoying and wasting worst. time yeah, Anyways. because this is when the owner of Snake Games wasted all, almost all Orc money on his own thing of making a gaming car with a PC in it, as in, as in a gaming car. The car is a car and a computer. Like, why? Yeah, and people wonder why some companies go to shit. Because CEOs are idiots. Uh, that's yeah, that's a whole debate for another time. Yeah, there's there's a long list on him. <laughs> well, yeah, slash raid, paste. And yeah, before we go, though, of course, thank you anyone who has been watching now. Thank you everyone who has been watching now or later. Uh, Being be rather quiet today, but oh well. Yeah, so it's just going to happen sometimes. So uh, yeah, thank you as always, Drakir. You're welcome as always, my friend. And thank you and, all for yeah. hopefully watching it on YouTube. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 there was something odd with that again. Like the previous, I, I think it was the episode number six or so, suddenly got a big jump in views again, all from the front page of YouTube or something or recommended. So, I've, which is just weird for me. Why do some of these videos just get absolute, they have magnified, uh, magnif the magnifying glass attention for some reason, and others not. It can't be because I'm that amusing, and because I'm not. <laughs> it, can be, it can be amusing at times. True, but it probably has to deal with it being more hammer stuff. But yeah, let's get that rate started. And yeah, 
Thank you everyone again for watching, and until next time, have a nice day, and until then. Be safe everyone, and watch out for undead seagulls and uh, demons from the warp. Thank <laughs> you.